to Inside the Wisdom Library, hosted by Dr. Stephen A. Ross, who discusses bypassed knowledge and insights from the past. Stephen is the curator of the Wisdom Library's 20,000 volume library with materials dating to 1492. During the show, Stephen and his guests will discuss topics including spirituality, ancient philosophy, esoteric subjects, psychology, dreams, and science. Stephen is the co-founder and CEO of the World Research Foundation. For over 50 years, he has researched and lectured around the globe, delivering more than 200 lectures and presentations. He has been interviewed on more than 150 radio programs and 15 regional and national television programs while writing six books. Here is your host, Stephen Ross. You are now inside the Wisdom Library. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Uh, this is our initial podcast, Inside the Wisdom Library, Forgotten Knowledge and Insights. Uh, before I even begin, I want to thank Chris and Leoni Leon for allowing me to get on this platform. They are the founders of uh, the Ohm Times Network, and I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. Now, why am I calling it the Wisdom Library? Aren't all libraries full of wisdom? They are, but what I'm attempting to do here is go a little bit deeper. And by way of explanation, I'd like you to think of a flashlight and a flashlight being a book. You turn on a flashlight, you have a light, and if you just have it close to your palm, that is exactly what you see. And if you open a book and you have it very close and you're just looking at the words, that is what I'm trying to get across with the flashlight close. But if you turn the flashlight outward, it illuminates a great area. And that's what I want you to understand about the books and the materials here. It's not just about the words. It is about the deeper, deeper wisdom that can be available. So there is, in my mind, a difference between wisdom and knowledge. And knowledge is the accumulation of facts. But wisdom is how are we going to utilize those facts? What areas are we going to broaden? So I hope I've explained this, this analogy well, that, yes, every library does contain knowledge and wisdom. But here on this show, I'm going to attempt to broaden everybody's vision. Now, what gives me the, the feeling that I am the one who should be doing this? Well, I believe everything is a, a matter of perspective. And I want to share a little story about perspective so you, you'll have some feeling here. Aristotle, the great philosopher, was walking along the Mediterranean, and in the distance he spied a man running between the Mediterranean and the shore. And as he came closer, he recognized it was the town madman carrying a bucket, taking water out of the Mediterranean and putting it in a hole. And as he got close and he could speak with this individual, he said, uh, what are you doing? And the man said, I am going to empty all of this water so I can see the beautiful blue-green bottom. And Aristotle looked at him and said, how are you going to get all of that water into that small little hole? And the man looked at him quizzically and said, great philosopher, what, what are you doing today? And Aristotle looked into the sky, threw up his hands and said, I am contemplating the universe. And the man said to him, how are you going to get all of that into that small little head of yours? Well, everything is a matter of perspective. And in today's introduction, I want to do two things. I want to give you a little overview of the type of topics that we have here in the Wisdom Library. 
And then I'm going to spend the last half of the program giving some of my background and experiences so you know who you're dealing with here. But first, I would like to start with um, a quick little story about my introduction as Dr. Stephen A. Ross and how I prefer to be addressed, and that is Steve or Stephen. You see, I used to do many radio shows, and on these shows, often the guest, the host would not tell me it was going to be a debate between myself and a keeper of alternative uh, information and someone in the medical profession. So as we would do this show and I was caught not knowing, but having access to all these materials, three quarters of the way through when a doctor or medical professional couldn't answer a question, they would say, hey, are you a doctor? And they would end the discussion in their mind. And I would have to say, no, I'm not. So eventually what I did was I finished my Bachelor of Science in Business and ended up with a PhD in Finance. And I have to tell you how excited I was the first time on one of these shows, the doctor who was stuck said, are you a doctor? And I said, yes, I am. But he was too afraid to inquire deeper. Yes, I was a doctor of finance. And that is really the reason why I went deeper into getting a degree. But I don't go by Dr. Ross. So if you address me, if you mail, uh, email, whatever, I'm plain Steve or Stephen. Now, within this library that is the uh, moderator said at the beginning, we have approximately 20,000 materials in here. And the subjects carry... Um, a, a wide range of areas, but it isn't just the areas. As I gave in my opening analogy, I want to provide more than just information about what somebody's written. I want to give you the flavor of who they are, um, their background, their thoughts. I'm not sure that people are fully aware of, of the actual lives of, of some of these people who we know, but just are not familiar with, why did they put together what they did? Why did they begin their philosophies? Now, some of the subject of matter we will be covering, uh, and we have quite extensive information here, are people such as Royal Rife and the uh, Universal Microscope. We've got healers J.R. Newton, who healed 250,000 people just through love. P.P. Quimby, we have a lot of his original writings. He was a mind healer. What do I mean by that? He actually would argue people out of their disease and illnesses. We're going to, on upcoming shows, talk about the greatest of all alchemists, Paracelsus. We have Dinshaw Gadali in spectrochrome and color therapy. I want to introduce Giuseppe Gallicaris to you. Caligaris in the late 1800s, early 1900s, discovered a way of instituting televisional powers within individuals. We're going to discuss, discuss people like Wilhelm Reich. I want to talk about Pythagoras. Eastern philosophies, Western philosophies, mysticism, dreams, electromagnetic therapeutic approaches, anything having to do with science, philosophy, psychology, dreams, any type of healing. Now, it may sound ambitious and I have a wide range of materials, but I believe that all of this is important, especially since the reason, the biggest purpose I would like to achieve here is for you to understand the following. You are a soul. 
You are power, you are light, and you are love. And often through my presentations and podcasts, I want to keep reminding you of exactly this. Because I feel now in society with everything going on, whether it's politics, um, even in some of the religions, we are looking outward as opposed to really going inward where we need to be. What was the admonition on the ancient temple walls? Three, three admonitions. Know thyself, know thyself, know thyself. And that would be the underlying pinning of why I am having these podcasts and what I want to achieve. Now, I've been given and I sought a lot of advice on the podcast. I've done hundreds of programs as a guest, and it was pretty easy just to jump on and start talking. This is my very first time uh, actually being a host. And I was given many suggestions about um, how to present and, and what would be important. But one of the more important points that I actually received was from my wife, Deborah. And she said, Steve, the ancient wisdom and knowledge and information is very important, but it needs to be brought down into today's world where people can really relate to it. And she also said to me, you need to not continually be preaching to the choir. I realized that the majority of the people who have tuned in already know me and are familiar with the subjects. But if we are going to have changes in consciousness, I really need to present information that the younger individuals will be relating to. And so I will try to always be cognizant when you get information through these podcasts, I will try to make sure that you can take something away that is truly going to benefit your life, to make you a happier individual, a healthier individual. It isn't just about tossing out facts here and there. It is, it, it, it is about giving something of value. Now, I will share a little bit more again about myself in the, the later part, but I am a double Aquarian. My sun, my moon, Mars, and Mercury are all in Aquarius. So I am, and I attempt to be very lighthearted. I do joke a lot. Um, it is just a part of my nature. So you're not going to find somebody somber here. Uh, and you're not going to find somebody browbeating here. You're going to find an individual, myself, who is looking to exchange and share. Now, the great philosopher Pythagoras had a wonderful quote. Now, for those of you not familiar with Pythagoras, he completed the eighth note for the octave. His right triangle is the cornerstone of all architecture. He is credited with talking about the music of the spheres. We are going to have a sh whole show presentation on him, but I want to share what I believe was one of his greatest quotes. And again, he has been credited with the word philosopher. Pythagoras said, when I come across those I meet and I exchange information, them with me, me with them, I call them brother and sister. And when I come across those who impart information to me, I call them mother and father. And when I come to those who I give guidance, 
I call them son and daughter. At any time, anybody you're with can be your mother or father, your sister or brother, or your son or daughter from moment to moment with advice that is exchanged. So going into this show, I am going to relate to you, my listeners, as my brothers and sisters, because I will be imparting to you, and even though the feedback I'm currently receiving now on my video screen is a bust of Goethe, I am going to assume that you will be contacting me and letting me know about your interests and your feelings about the show. And I hope if this format and I uh, am of interest uh, and imparting enough love that you will tell others and we will grow in our audience. Now, another yogic story I would like to share with you has to do with a heavy-duty businessman. Everything was about business. And then one morning he wakes up. Obviously, he had some sort of dream. He was wondering, what does this all mean? What is the rhyme and purpose of, of life in the universe? So a close person to him said, you need to go to the metaphysical bookstore down the street. They're going to have the answers. So when Mr. Businessman marched into the bookstore and he said, I am looking for the purpose and meaning of life. Can you please direct me in, in what I need? And the person in the bookstore said, whoa, you're going to really need to go to Tibet and talk with the yogis up there because that will be the answer. So our Mr. Businessman who left from your particular city, that is the city of every listener, goes over to Tibet and starts climbing the Himalayas. Unfortunately for him, it was the wrong season and he wasn't dressed properly. He passes out in the snow. The next thing he knows, he's waking up, and there is a group of yogis there. And they said to him, what are you doing here? And he said, I have come to find the answer and riddle of the universe and my purpose and why I'm here. Can you help me? They paused a second, and they said, no. We can't. The man was in shock. He was devastated. He says, where do I go? Where to find the answer and the meaning of life? They look at him and they said, where did you come from? And he said, I came from your city. That is the city of everyone listening. And they said, that is where you're going to find the answer because the answer is within you. The answer is always within you. The answer was within the businessman who went to the Himalayas and the answer, the purpose, the riddles are all within every one of you who are listening. And it's in every one who is not listening. But I am hoping through this series of podcasts that again, you will recognize the aspect that you are power within your soul, within your higher self is all of the answers. But trying to find it outside you're going to find direction, but the true depth, the meat, or as the commercial says, where's the beef, is always going to be inside of you. So 
as we go along, I will be sharing uh, information through my journey. And in a little bit, I will tell you several stories and they're not intended for you to think, oh my gosh, I'm not like him. I didn't, I, I didn't have these experiences. And you must know that a lot of people who enter the, the library here are immediately intimidated. They're thinking to themselves and, and they relate to me, oh my God, I haven't read, I haven't read as much as him. He's gonna think that I, I, I don't know. And when I get individuals here who have really great knowledge, they're always saying to me, well, Steve, you know that. I, I, I know. Well, I don't know everything. I, I don't have unlimited knowledge here. I'm a seeker. And when people ask me about myself, it's very simple. I'm a student. I'm nobody's guru. I'm nobody's mystic. I'm an individual just like you. But when I share stories after the break, I want you to realize that the secret is, I just did it. I just pursued. I never stopped with the thought, I, I know everything. And we must start questioning experts. What is an expert? Well, in our parlance, an expert is somebody who seems to know a lot, but that does not mean that they really truly know. They have a lot of facts. So again, knowledge is an accumulation of facts. Wisdom is how we are going to use those facts in our life. And I believe we can, uh, cut to a break soon. And when we return, I want to be sharing more uh, about who I am and a little bit of my journey. And we'll go from there. So Chris, I don't know if we can uh, cut now to a break. Welcome to Ohm Times TV, a division of Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. Welcome to Less Complicated Inc. This is the internet site for Dr. Stephen A. Ross. This site contains hundreds of posts and writings composed by Stephen on a variety of topics, including spirituality, philosophy, health, mystery schools, dreams, esoteric topics, and science. At Less Complicated Inc., you can purchase Stephen's six books along with other books that Stephen recommends. These are available in printed form and PDF downloads. Throughout his adult life, Stephen has been guided through dreams and visions that have led him around the world to gather helpful information. To take advantage of Stephen's journeys, go to www.lesscomplicated.net. Stephen also has a YouTube channel at Less Complicated with Dr. Stephen A. Ross. For 
For nearly 40 years, the World Research Foundation has supplied library information packets to more than 250,000 people. The purpose of the foundation is to locate, codify, evaluate, and disseminate all information dealing with health. The World Research Foundation has gathered information in an unbiased manner, encompassing information from traditional and non-traditional sources. Library packets range from 200 to 500 pages for more than 300 diseases and illnesses. These packets inform you of a multitude of options you have for your health challenge. The packets are available in printed or PDF downloads, ranging between $20 and $75. Check out the packets and books at www.wrf.org or call 928-284-3300. You are back inside the Wisdom Library with Steve Ross. I want to continue now, give you a little bit of a background of your host and librarian here in the Wisdom Library. Uh, I feel very fortunate. I was brought up by uh, parents who were extremely open. I remember at a very early age, I was, oh, probably... 12, 13 years old, and I asked my parents, what religion are we? And they said to me, well, what religion would you want to be? And I was kind of stumped. And I said, I don't know. And they said, we will give you some books on various religions, and you are free to go with any neighbors or friends to any religious institution and if you can explain to us why you want to join or be a member, you are free to follow that path. When I was 16, 17 years old, I said, what political party are we? And they said, what political party would you want to be? And once again, I was, huh? And they said, look. Here are the philosophies of the various politicians. You look at that, you determine what you resonate with, and that's the political party you're affiliated with. And so I'm saying it was very open because I've met many people throughout my journeys who came from very rigid orthodox backgrounds who have related to me they needed to unlearn a lot of things that they were taught or was a part of their lifestyle that they no longer resonated to. So I had a very open uh, upbringing, and it was when I was about 19 years old that I noted a book in my parents' bookcase on Edgar Cayce. And I am going to backtrack just a little bit, but I'm going to plant that little seed, Edgar Cayce, the, the psychic. Well, I had a massive sports background and competed all the way through college, 100 meters, 200 meters, anchored our relay team. But in my junior year, while I was working out during the Easter break, a gardener had left a sprinkler head on our running track. I was working out by myself. I was running about three-quarter speed. And I noticed just when I was coming down with my left leg, the sprinkler head. And I tried to avoid it stretched out my stride, and just tore my knee up, went on my hands and knees. It was the Easter break at Cal State Northridge, my university in uh, California, outside of Los Angeles. Crawled on my hands and knees to the trainer's room. They called the coach. Then they sent me to the sports physician for the Rams, Dodgers, and L.A. Lakers, Dr. Robert Curlin. This was 19, oh, 1968. 
he diagnosed me and said, you are going to need surgery. You're not going to be able to compete again without it. For a second opinion, I was sent to Ducky Drake, trainer at UCLA. And uh, if you haven't guessed my age, Kareem Jabbar, the great and former Laker, was still playing basketball for John Wooden. Ducky Drake said, you're going to have to have surgery. I was very dejected. I went back to my locker room. And in the training room, next to a Whirlpool, was a popular mechanics magazine. Generally has nothing to do with medicine. So I opened it up and I read about a technique from Germany. uh, Well, actually from Russia. And I thought, I wonder if this would work for me. So I call up Dr. Curlin. At that time, I was 19 years old and said, Dr. Curlin, would this work for me? His answer was, oh, that's holistic garbage. That's there's no way that's going to work. And I said, well, why do you say that? And he goes, well, this is America. If we don't have it, nobody has it. It was something that I could do myself. And. I did do that therapy. I did not have surgery. And six weeks later, I resumed training. There were some things I couldn't do. I couldn't run around the curve. Uh, that put too much stress on my left uh, left knee. But that year, I uh, finished fifth in the United States and received my All-American designation. Here was my question. Why did the sports physician for major professional teams say something wouldn't work, and it did. That planted a seed for me. What other things exist in this world that we in America are not told about, we're not familiar with? The experts don't tell us about it. And so this was the impetus of my background in going out and gathering everything that could be discovered. And basically it was mostly in natural alternative complementary medicines. So this wisdom library of the World Research Foundation is loaded and specializes in complementary alternative, holistic medicine. Three years after that, I remember going to my, and I'm chuckling a little here because I remember being called over to my parents' home. And when I came in, my father was sitting in a chair, just exasperated about something. And I said to him, what's the matter? And my mom, who was there, my dad spoke a little, said, oh, we just went to a psychic. I go, and usually this is the reverse. Normally, it's the kids that are whack, wackos, and the parents are saying, why are you doing that? But here was the reverse. I see my father like that. My mother says, we went to a psychic. I said, well, what's the story? And they said, well, we had met a man, and this this particular man was doing something that the great mystic, psychic Edgar Cayce was doing. And he ended up telling your father so many things that he he blew a circuit. And my father kind of came to life. And I said, "Well, well, tell me what happened. And he said, I had a reading from this man. And he told me so many things about my physical He didn't know anything about me. I walk in. He told me about my diabetes. He he told me about things going in my body, including which of the vertebrae were sublaxed that a chiropractor could check. But my dad said when he told me a story of when I was a nine-year-old boy in school, and I was acting up, and the teacher called me to the front, grabbed me by my heels, and held me upside down in the class. I was shocked because I never told anyone, including my parents, 
about that story. And it was interesting because my father was carrying on and he said, as a result of that, I was told the German big Gunhilde type, I've always shied away. And that was what the school teacher was. And my father went on to relate several other instances that when I actually heard this tape, I was absolutely uh, mystified. Now, my folks said that they had had to wait one year to get a reading. And I, of course, in my sleuth way was going, oh, maybe somehow they investigated. So I thought, I'm going to really check out this, this individual. And, and by the way, um, this man has passed away many, many years ago. I decided I would find someone else who was scheduled to have a reading. And I would talk this person into letting me take the reading and just show up at this man's door. And when I did that, they had no possible way that they could prepare or find out anything about me. And I did find somebody. And with my silver tongue, I said, don't you want to know if this guy is really legit? You need to switch with me because I had had an appointment for eight months later. So I show up, hi, I'm taking so-and-so's reading and I proceeded to get a reading and I don't want to take up this whole time because it isn't exactly about this individual. His name was actually Edward A. Monroe. And I, when I read my Edgar Casey book in my folks bookcase, they asked Edgar Casey who would continue his work. And he gave initials EAM, born in the tri-state area. And that was Edward A. Monroe. At the very end of the reading, Jock McKinnitry, who was the spirit who came through Edward Monroe, said, all your future guidance is going to come in your dreams. And I remember kind of snickering because I either couldn't recall dreams or they were very silly in my mind. But I was anxious. And I actually went one week without sleeping because I was so anxious to have a dream and my guidance that I really couldn't get into the right state. But apparently it took a week for me to be so tired. Finally, I had a dream. And in this dream, I heard a voice say, what kind of animal is Steve? And in the dream, a picture book opened up and a finger pointed to, the, to a picture. But before I tell you the picture, I recognized the voice in the dream. It was a volleyball friend of mine, a, a, a co-player. We played indoor volleyball, uh, volleyball, seven men, six playing at a time. I thought I had a great relationship with this fellow. So I called him up and I said, and I'm just going to make up this name, Frank. I said, Frank, is there anything bothering you about me? And he goes, what? Now, we hadn't spoken in about three years. I asked him a second time, Frank, is there anything bothering you about me? He says, what, what are you talking about? What? Third time, Frank, is there anything bothering you about me? Are you sick? Why are you asking? What's your, why? Now, at that time, I was 23 years old, and I don't know why I said this. I want to be a better person. And then he turns on the phone and he says, yes, there is something that's bothered me. My heart started pumping. I, I, I was swallowing. I, I was nervous. I said, what? He said, do you remember what you used to do to our other seventh player when he would come into the game and make a mistake? And I said, no, I, I really don't. He said, you would glare at him. You would make him so nervous. Now, Frank is still relating his story. He said, he and the other player 
would go out for pizza after the tournament and the guy would throw up because he couldn't win your approval. And I thought you were a real hog. And the picture in the book was the picture of a hog. I thanked Frank. I hung up the phone and I was crying and I was mystified and I couldn't figure out how could this dream. After that, I had four to six dreams every night for two and a half months on every phase of my personality, on likes, on dislikes, commentaries. And then I started getting telephone numbers. Just telephone number. I would keep a yellow legal pad next to me. And I taught myself how to write without opening my eyes, move the pad, and flip the paper. Some nights I would have 16 pages. But when I got telephone numbers, I was, what do I do with this? So I would just, I said, I'm going to call and just say, is Mike there? So I would call and someone would answer the phone and say, we're waiting for you. We have something for you to caretake. And so this went on and directed me to places all throughout the United States and the world. And part of the wisdom library consists of information that has come um, through the direction of dreams. It is, this library has come from individuals who we've met throughout our journeys who have left their libraries here. So I am sharing this and giving you uh, a little bit more so you realize that I am traveling in several worlds here. I've had a sports, I had a sports background. I'm into science and to finance, but I will tell you the world of spirituality, the spirits, are as, the dream world are just as strong in my background. And as I have proceeded and, and followed the direction through dreams, and let's stop right there. We, we will eventually have a podcast on dreams, but everybody dreams. Everybody dreams. Now, I have never joined any group or organization I am completely, I'm, I can't use the word self-taught because I recognize, I, I do hear voices when I'm counseling people, giving me advice and suggestions to share with the requester or the person who's in front of me. So to say I'm self-taught may be only a, a half truth because my education, I believe, is coming from a higher source. Now, do I say it's the only source? No. And if you recall my story of Aristotle, I am just saying from my perspective, it has been a higher guidance in my life. But we all dream. We all have access to these various aspects. And whether we call it the oversold that Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote about or the over-self. It is an aspect that, that every one of us has. And I have looked as that being my guide mechanism in this lifetime. I still am Stephen Ross, the joking Aquarian. However, I recognize before I just rashly do something, I take that one extra moment to listen to another voice that, that comes upon me. So here we are having this aspect of the spiritual, 
having the scientific. And it's been a learning curve for me because, of course, I have been indoctrinated with uh, this is how things must happen. Physics say this must take place. Our scientific world tells us only this can happen. But I, I would like you to think about the following. If you look at the mystics throughout time, if you look at the old teachings, and, and I've been very blessed in my life to have this around since, since my late teens, they will say no law is ever broken in our accomplishment of what we do, which you will call miracles, but there are no miracles. Now, they will say, we use higher laws to supersede lesser laws. Example, take a piece of paper, a regular white piece of paper, and chuck it in the air and watch it just kind of flip-flop around, and generally it will go straight down. Fold that piece of paper into an airplane. Sail it across, just launch it, and that same piece of paper, if you really fold it right, and I don't recall right now the greatest distances, but it could. I have flown a paper plane across this entire library. Why? Because we used higher law to supersede a lesser law. We used a law of aerodynamics. So we did not break the law of what a paper should do, just thrown. You use higher laws to supersede a lesser law. And throughout our existence, people who have accomplished miraculous activities, whether it's healing or by location or a multitude of different um, activities and actions, law is never broken. But now think how exciting this is. If a law is never broken and you use a higher law, that means you don't have to be an Olympic athlete to achieve doing something greater than you're doing. You don't have to be Superman. Now, very early in my investigations, I was told to get a book by an individual, a human individual. And this book was Pantagelis Yoga Aphorisms. Now, within this book, it tells you all of the aspects that human beings are capable of. If you go through 10 years of, of meditation or you have a guru, I will share this with you. Within 24 hours, I experienced every single thing that was written in that book. Now, before you, you get the wrong impression, later when I attempted to do a lot of these for my, my interest, I couldn't do it. But what did it show me? It showed me that all things are possible. I didn't need 10 years of intense meditation. Now, if you want to do that, don't get me wrong. Do it. If you want to have a master teacher and a guru, fine. There's nothing to matter with that. All of these things are, are great. I came across Charles Kellogg, the nature singer, part of the Kellogg's family. And he was very interesting because he was called the bird whistler. He could imitate any bird sound. 
but he had one other gift. And in an upcoming show, I will go into greater depth. He could, through his voice, alter fire, flames. And so KGO Radio did an exhibition with him. And he was able to take a flame in a plastic tube and raise the flame and lower the flame and extinguish the flame from 29 miles away. I thought that was amazing until I came across the Sufi school, the Rafay, R-A-F-A-I school of Sufis. And I met a Sufi and he would utter, and by the way, uh, with Charles Kellogg, I did hear a recording of the sound with the fire. And I did note the Sufi had a different sound and he was controlling fire. And then of all things, I came across the Laplanders and met a lap reader who had a sound and she can control fire. None of the sounds were the same. They were not even the same uh, higher frequency or notes. What, what does that mean? It means possibly it is the belief. It is our belief. So I'm noticing we're, we're closing up on our time, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of um, feeling about what you can expect here. You should expect the unexpected expected. We can talk on a variety of topics here and we will and I will be having guests when I feel comfortable that I can showcase our guests and and have uh, the routine and everything here and the picture and the sound. Now my next show coming up next Wednesday is going to be is the orthodox medical community colorblind because I want to go into the whole aspects of color. So I am again grateful to the, the people who have allowed me on this platform. I am grateful to everyone who I've met along the way. Every experience I have had has led me to where I am sitting in here with a dream I've had of sharing information. And so I hope that this has been interesting and entertaining for you. And if you do like what has taken place here, that you will tell others and please, whatever feedback you would like me to know with questions, feel free to contact me. So that will do it for, for today's uh, podcast. Uh, Chris, uh, that is th the end of my presentation today. Uh, goodbye all, and thank you very much. And join me again inside the Wisdom Library.